Um, it was painful, it's scary, and I don't want to do it again. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here to my channel, my name is Cor and I'm your business nurse from Southeast England. In today's vlog, it will not be my usual vlog. It's not relating to nursing or my life here in the UK, but it is about my personal experience. So I just want to share it to you guys, as you can see from the title, it's about a nose job. So yes, guys, I had a nose job. So in this vlog, I'll be sharing to you my Heiko nose thread lift journey. So from the start of the procedure and um, what had happened along the way, what are the complications and what had caused these problems and what are the things I did to manage the problem. And in the part two of this video, I'll be sharing to you what are the pros and cons of doing the Heiko nose thread lift and what are the aftercare procedures that you should observe once you have this Heiko nose thread lift. So disclaimers first, I am not creating this vlog to put blame on the person or the clinic that has done my procedure. So this is more on creating awareness for you guys before you decide to undergo a Heiko nose thread lift. So let's get started. It's really awkward to share this kind of experience to you guys. The reason behind this is just that I don't want people who are suffering the complications of this Heiko nose thread lift to be left in the dark and not having information at all what to do and not having understanding what is going on with them because I was there. I was in the peak of my anxiety because I don't have enough information. I haven't seen comprehensive videos about the complications of Heiko nose thread lift. I've been researching a lot and I have been contacting um, the person that did my procedure. By the way, we have a good communication and relationship to the person that did my procedure. It's just that the only problem is I am abroad and the procedure was done in the Philippines. So imagine I am in the UK and the procedure was done in the Philippines. I will share more to you guys on what happened about my Heiko nose thread lift journey. So let's do the backstory first. So let me share to you a photo. Tening this photo. This is my nose prior to any nose jobs. You heard it right, prior to any nose jobs. So actually, Heiko nose thread lift is not my first time of having nose job. This is actually my second time of undergoing a nose job. The first one that I had is nose fillers i had nose fillers back in 2020 it was february 2020 so when i was staying in belfast northern ireland i found this um, reputable um, clinic that, that does cosmetic procedures non-invasive cosmetic procedures so i did a nose filler back in 2020 i'll share to you some photos Don't mind my redness, guys. This is not an allergy. Yes, I have hot flush. And, and this is one of the side effects of my chemo medication. So, let's proceed. So, as what I have said earlier, I had a nose filler back in 2020. And I was happy with the procedure. Actually, it lasted for more than two years. But then, I have been watching a lot of TikTok videos. And I heard about... Heiko nose thread lift. Ding ding. So I was so interested about the procedure. It was last year that I learned more about Heiko nose thread lift. But honestly, I haven't researched much about the procedure. I just, I get hyped because of its popularity online um, through Facebook and through TikTok. So I told myself, I'm going to have the procedure once I go to the Philippines for a short holiday. And so I did. So I had my Heiko nose thread lift in the Philippines on November 2022. So with very little knowledge about Heiko nose thread lift, I just 
when to, to the procedure because I know the person that will do the procedure. I know her so well and I know the clinic. It has a good reputation. But I didn't research much about the complications because there was a promo. <laughs> yes, guys, there was a promo for the procedure. Um, I paid 14,000 pesos. I will put the conversion into dollars or pounds here so you would know. Um, that I had a good deal with the procedure. I have a total of 14 treads, guys. 10 treads for the bridge and then 4 treads um, on the tip of the nose. The procedure went so well, it was quick and I had an instant result. I look so pretty as you can see in these photos. So my family was really surprised because I didn't inform them because I don't want any judgment <laughs> and I don't want them to stop me with the procedure. So I just did it. If they will see this video, they will say, I told you so. <laughs> I can only imagine what will, be the, what will be their reaction once they see this video. <laughs> okay, so I had the procedure in November 2022. So I was told about the aftercare procedures. I went back to the UK after a short holiday in the Philippines on the same month, November. November. So I think after a week of the procedure, I went back to the UK. I didn't notice any negative changes from the procedure. So I thought that everything's going to be all right. So I was advised for two weeks, no strenuous activities. Actually, my um, my wound was healing very well because that time I was taking antibiotics for my chest infection. I had a very runny nose and I was coughing that time. So when I was having my antibiotic therapy for my chest infection, um, it's also good for my procedure. So I didn't have another course of antibiotics. So everything went well until January of 2023. Um, that's when I felt a bump on the tip of my nose. It looks like a pimple, but it is painful and it's swollen. And then eventually, there was a pus coming out from that bump. And I was really terrified. My The entry point of my nose thread lift actually is already healed. But then... Since I have a, a, an active lifestyle, I'm not really that person who really works out like every three days or five days. But I, I always find time to do um, high intensity workout at least every week. And I also do weightlifting. Not too heavy but you know at least five kilos. And I didn't realize that my body is still recovering from the procedure. Because as far as I know, two weeks is enough um, for the recovery period of the procedure. I could no thread lift. But then when I came back here from holiday, so that was November. December, I was already, I'm already back to my usual routines. Like I already, I went back to work as a nurse. And then I do my high intensity workout from time to time. I do my um, weightlifting. And I love sleeping against the pillow like prone position so i think that's one of the factors that have um, aggravated my the complications on my nose so i actually messaged the person that did the procedure and unfortunately since i am here in the uk guys there's very minimal thing that she can do for me only advice because the only way to have it done quickly is to have the thread extracted you know, to have it removed. But since I'm in the UK, so what can I do? So I just rely on her advice and through my research on what can I do further to manage the problem because I was really anxious about it. Of course, guys, you can see the face. This is the first thing you see when you encounter a person, the face. And the good thing about that time is we are still wearing um, face masks at work. After a month, on February this pus is still coming out. It's still coming out. It's still swollen. It's still red. And there is pain inside my nose. So when you try to clean your nose like that, inside it's really painful. And there is pain in here. So imagine that um, experience. 
I phoned actually the doctor here to to give me antibiotics for it because you know in in the UK they won't prescribe you antibiotics immediately not unless really if you have high fever or um any other um, indications of infection if it's just very minimal um infection they won't prescribe you antibiotics so i struggled on the first time that i consulted a doctor here in the uk they won't give me antibiotics guys i went to the hospital for that for that nose because i was really paranoid what's going on and i told them i had this nine invasive procedure back in the philippines and i think it's infected and they won't believe me that it's infected because it's not really swollen and i don't have any fever and other indications of infection so they sent me home without antibiotics. I'm very anxious about it. On February 27, I had already two bumps on my nose. Plus there's pus coming out and it's really red and swollen. So that's the time I decided to go to emergency, A&E. And I told them, look guys, I have ongoing infection. And I have to exaggerate more so that they can prescribe me antibiotics. And so I was prescribed with antibiotics. So I had one, um, one week course of antibiotics to treat the infection because if you can see the photo here that there's already two bumps and it's really swollen and there's a pus coming out. Like literally if I press my nose, there's a pus coming out. But according to... Um, my friend that did the procedure is not really a pause it's more on um it's the thread that is trying to come out from the skin but i think there's also an infection factor because the swelling the redness and the pause has improved for a while oh, so on march 13 there's another pause coming out from the pimple like um extrusion I was thinking, oh my god, here it is again. So it's non-stop. Every time I press my nose, there's a pus coming out. And then on the following day, when I was massaging my nose, there's a small thread that came out of my nose from the opening. Very tiny, a tiny thread. So I'll share it to you guys. It's a clear thread because the thread used was PCL threads. So a few days after, even though there's a thread that came out from the nose, I can still feel pain and there's still um, parts that is hard to touch. So there's still thread that is trying to come out from my nose and there's an area that is filled with, it looks like filled with fluid, you know. But little did I know that is, is the thread that is trying to come out from my system. So on the 25th of March, there's another thread that came out. So I'll share the photo to you guys. And then on 7th of April, um, I have a runny nose. I have a, a wound there and then I have a runny nose. Because I keep blowing my nose, which triggered more the expulsion of the threads. So there's a third thread that came out on the 7th of April. But, you know... I actually assisted the thread to go out because I can see that, that there's a fluid building up on the tip of my nose. So what I did, I actually pricked my nose with a gauge 18 needle. So I was actually guided by my friend who did the procedure. So I did that just to release the, field, the fluid filled area of my nose. So when I pricked that one, there's a pus that came out from the opening when I'm trying to blow my nose on that day. So there's a thread that came out. So that's the third um, thread that came out from my nose. After 24 hours, after having a hot shower, there are two threads that came out from the opening. So, yan, lumabas yan after hot shower. Nakikita niyo ba? Gano kahaba? Nakikita niyo ba? Yan. I massage, massage ko lang yung ilong ko. I just massage my nose. Kasi nga may opening pa dyan. After ng hot shower yan, lumabas na siya. A day after, another hot shower I did, two big treads came out from the opening of my nose. So I didn't really manually evacuated that, guys. I just massaged my nose 
because it's already been rejected by the body. The thing that is happening to me is actually a rejection from high nose shred lift. It's a rejection. So there's nothing more that I can do to stop it. I just uh, massage my nose after I'm, I'm a hot shower and eventually it came out. So on April 10, there's another thread that came out from my nose. It's a small one. So on the 11th, my skin is still open. So the wound is still open. And then on the 12th, after a hot shower again, there's three pieces of threads that came out from the opening. And then after a day, the skin has closed again. And you think that it's over. It's like, oh, finally, it's over. All of the threads came out. I, I, I felt relieved, actually, because imagine that agony I had since January, the pain, the swelling. I even get headaches because of the, the thread extrusions. I thought it's over. But on the 23rd of April, so just recently, another bump is visible again on my nose. And I was like, oh my God, this is nonstop. I'm tired of um, dressing my nose. I'm tired of covering it with plaster, you know. And time to time, I have to wear back the face mask to hide my nose. Um, I'm not denying that I had a nose job. It's just that it's so um, awkward to say it and also... I don't want a lengthy conversation about it because I have to explain this and that. On the April 23rd that I have seen this bump again, I told myself, come on, I already knew how to manage this thread. So I prick it again with a gauge 18 needle. Um, my advice to you guys, don't do it if you're not confident to do this. the things that I did to manage my um, thread extrusion because if you're not medically related so i was guided i'm a nurse and i know the sterility the sterile procedures i don't have any choice really because i actually consulted some um, cosmetic clinics here in the uk and it was it is so expensive just for the consultation itself it's already 150 pounds for the consultation there's no procedure yet just a consultation and then I have inquired a lot of clinics here if they have done any removal of high nose thread lift and they said they have not done it before and they said that I should be referred to plastic surgeons and I was like oh but anyway I can't risk that amount of money so I was researching and my um, my friend who did the procedure sent me some videos so I did it my way guys um Maybe I won't share it to you how I did it because you might attempt to do it and I might get blamed if you get more complications if you try to do it yourself. Trust me, I have been thinking multiple times before I did it myself. Um, it was painful, it's scary, and I don't want to do it again. So I will not share how I did it. But if you can, if you want to know it, and if you are medically related, you can message me on my Facebook page, Cordapia TV, guys, if you want to know how that I did it. Because I don't have any choice. The only choice is to pay a hefty amount of money to go to the clinic and have it done or to go back to the Philippines to go back to the clinic that did the procedure. As what I've shared, on the 23rd of April, there's a bump. So I opened my skin and there a thread came out. Five days after that, my skin is close yep you cannot see i'm not wearing any makeup guys just to let you know i'm just wearing powder and lipstick no foundation nothing so that's that's my nose at the moment there is a very minimal scar that you can notice so i am really hopeful that there will be no more bumps because I'm already tired. Imagine my agony from January up to this month. So the skin is closed. The entry point is closed. No more bumps. No more redness. No more swelling. No more pain. But I can still feel some threads. But I just try to ignore it now. And I just get on with it. Actually, I went back to my usual exercise. Because 
since January, I haven't been lifting any weights and I haven't been doing intense exercise because I'm too scared that the threads will just pop out everywhere. So I realized since I know already how to manage this, the thread complications, so I went back to my usual exercise. I, I told myself that if, if the thread will come out, it will come out. Let it be. You know, there's nothing more I can do. So this is my current nose now. After having the Haiku nose thread lift last year, November. So, sorry, my pores are quite big. Because I didn't cover it. No makeup. It's just powder. So that's my nose now. Is there any difference compared when I had my filler? So there is a minimal change on the bridge of my nose. Yeah. So hopefully there will be no more pimple-like pus or pain swelling that would happen. Uh, fingers crossed. So that's why I'm now I'm confident to do this vlog. That's why I haven't been doing vlogs lately because I have a very low self-esteem when I was experiencing these complications in my nose. I lost the motivation to record myself and to be in front of the camera because of what had happened. But now since it it, it is healed fingers crossed and praying that it won't open again despite that i'm back to my high intensity exercises but as what i have said i know how to manage it now i'm confident how to do it now fingers crossed no more complications just to share to you guys these are most of the threads that came out of my nose since march so i did not manage to save i think the first two threads that came out from my nose but i did save most of it so you can see there are big ones this is a small box guys that's my hand and these are the threads so if you connect them i think it will make one thread two two threads then i think this is the third thread so i really saved these threads for the vlog <laughs> So thank you guys for watching the part 1 of my Heiko Nose Thread Lift journey. I have shared to you my detailed experience of the procedure. If you want to know the pros and cons of Heiko Nose Thread Lift and if you want to learn about the aftercare, so please watch the part 2 of my Heiko Nose Thread Lift journey and will help you to decide if you want to proceed with the procedure, okay? So once again, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, guys, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe to my channel, guys. I know that this video is out of my normal topics on my channel, but it's good also to share some informative videos that would help the general public. So thank you once again. I hope I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.